सो लेट एस बिगिन द डिस्कशन फर्स्ट इज हाइपर कैलिमिया नॉर्मल सीरम पोटेशियम इज बिटवीन थ्री पॉइंट फाइव टू फाइव मिलीकुलेंट्स पर लीटर दिस इज समथिंग यू ऑलरेडी नो वाइल इन अडल्ट्स सीरम हाइपर कैलिमिया इज डिफाइंड वेरियसली एज पोटेशियम मोर देन फाइव और मोर देन फाइव पॉइंट फाइव मोस्टली इन केस ऑफ पीडियट्रिक पॉपुलेशन सीरियम पोटेशियम लेवल्स मोर देन फाइव पॉइंट फाइव मिलीकुलेंट पर लीटर आर सेट टू बी हाइपर कैलिमिया नो वट आर द कॉजेज ऑफ हाइपर कैलिमिया द कॉजेज आई एम डिस्कसिंग आर टेकन दे आर बेस्ड अपॉन वॉट इज गिवन इन नेल्सन बट द टेबल्स हैव बीन यू नो सिंप्लीफाइड अ बिट एंड आई विल बी एडिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन वेर एवर इट इज नीडेड सो फर्स्ट इज इंक्रीज पोटेशियम इनटेक इन केस द इनटेक इज मोर देन ऑब्वियसली देर इज अ टेंडेंसी टू डिवेलप हाइपर कैलिमिया इफ देर इज ओवरऑल पोटेशियम इनटेक फॉर एनी रीजन और आई वी इनटेक ऑफ पोटेशियम देन द हाइपर कैलिमिया कैन डिवेलप इन केस ऑफ रिपीटेड ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन्स अगेन हाइपर कैलिमिया कैन डिवेलप बिकॉज वेन एवर देर इज स्टोरेज ऑफ ब्लड पोटेशियम इज अ इंट्रा सेलुलर आयन पोटेशियम मूव्स आउट ऑफ आर बी सीज एंड दिस पोटेशियम मूविंग आउट ऑफ आर बी सीज produces increase in the serum potassium levels in the stored blood so when this high potassium containing blood is given it raises the serum potassium level as well you need to understand that in case of fresh blood the chances of uh, hyperkalemia are relatively less in case of stored blood or blood products particularly where rbcs have been stored for more than uh, 36 to 48 hours you will find that serum potassium levels are significantly more second category are the transcellular shifts of potassium you know that potassium is a intracellular ion in certain situations certain acid base imbalance as well as use of certain drugs this potassium which is inside the cell can move out into the blood this extracellular potassium will cause manifestations of hyperkalemia so second mechanism of hyperkalemia is increased transcellular shift of potassium even if the total body potassium may remain normal so acidosis causes shifting of potassium to the outside so whether it is metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis hyperkalemia can occur in both of them but nelson also says in description that metabolic acidosis causes more severe hyperkalemia then respiratory acidosis so it is metabolic acidosis which is a bigger stronger culprit second are the drugs now these drugs are very important mcq on these drugs have already been asked so what are the important drugs beta blockers can cause hyperkalemia succinylcholine can cause hyperkalemia digitalis and fluoride intoxication can cause hyperkalemia third category are acute events like rhabdomyolysis tumor lysis syndrome in multiple malignancies and malignant hyperthermia which is a complication of certain anesthetics they all can produce hyperkalemia by causing increased potassium movement from inside to outside the cell in patients who are in people who are undergoing rigorous exercise vigorous exercise as well as insulin deficiency can cause transcellular shifts of potassium hemolysis hematoma and gi bleeding can also cause transcellular shift of potassium to the outside and finally there is a thing called as hyperkalemic periodic paralysis which is a channelopathy in which transcellular shift produces episodic paralysis episodic uh, hyperkalemia in the patient the third category is decreased potassium excretion potassium is not getting excreted out of the body so firstly obviously it will be seen in all varieties of renal failure it will occur in primary adrenal diseases like salt losing forms of cah there are two important salt losing forms you have 21 hydroxylase deficiency and you have 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency they both will have hyperkalemia it can be seen in addison's disease where there is deficiency of uh, your um, where there is deficiency of adrenal cortical hormones and it can occur in ald ald stands for adreno leuco dystrophy then it can be seen in hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism i have highlighted it because mcq on this has been asked in central institute aim central exam which among the following are causes of hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism except so what the causes of hyporeninemic hypoaldosteronism will cause decreased potassium excretion leading to hyperkalemia the causes include lupus nephritis urinary tract obstruction sickle cell disease and post renal transplant 
So these are the four important causes that you need to remember. Then we have renal tubular disease can cause hyperkalemia which includes pseudo hypoaldosteronism, Barter syndrome type 2. And finally we have drugs. Barter syndrome type 2 only the early onset parts or the rare forms of Barter syndrome type 2 can cause this. Usually as we shall see Barter syndrome in general tends to produce hypokalemia. But there is one form type 2 which can sometimes produce in the early forms or acute stress form it can cause hyperkalemia as well. Now drugs which cause hyperkalemia by decreasing potassium excretion they will be the drugs which will be affecting the renal function or renal blood flow directly or indirectly. It includes drugs like renin inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, potassium sparing diuretics, calcineurin inhibitors like cyclosporin and tacrolimus, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, heparin, trimethoprim and drospyrenone. Drospyrenone is present in some of the oral contraceptive pills. So, it is a component of some OCPs. So, these are the major causes of hyperkalemia that you need to remember. Next, we move over to the opposite end of the spectrum that is hypokalemia. Serum hypokale hypokalemia is said to be there when the serum potassium level is less than 3.5 milliequivalents per liter. So, that is the definition of hypokalemia. What are the causes of hypokalemia? First is decreased potassium intake. It is classically seen, question on it has been asked in exam, anorexia nervosa. So, I am writing a Q here. Secondly, it can occur due to transcellular shifts of potassium from blood to inside the cell. There, hyperkalemia was happening opposite. The potassium was moving out of the cell into the blood. Here, the potassium is moving inside the cell. When it will move inside the cell? In case there is alkalosis, there it was acidosis, remember. Then insulin can cause transcellular shift of potassium inside. Drugs or toxins like alpha adrenergic agonist, hyd hydroxychloroquine, theophylline, barium, toluene and cesium chloride can all cause hypokalemia by making the potassium move inside. The total body potassium will always be normal in these patients. Refeeding syndrome as we see in uh, severe acute malnutrition, thyrotoxic periodic paralysis which is sometimes seen in severe long-standing uh, hyperthyroidism and hypokalemic periodic paralysis again which is a type of channelopathy. The third category will be increased potassium losses. Now potassium loss can occur either outside the kidney or from the kidney itself. So, we can have extra renal causes and the renal losses of potassium. So, first are extra renal losses. Extra renal means urine is not uh, excreting extra potassium. The potassium is being lost somewhere else. It can occur in patients with diarrhea, very common. It can occur in sweating. It can occur in laxative abuse and use or ingestion of exhalate or clay ingestion. Then we have the renal losses which is a huge list. First of all, renal losses can be subdivided into multiple types. Renal losses with metabolic acidosis which cause hypokalemia. They include renal tubular acidosis, both proximal and distal, diabetic ketoacidosis where the total body potassium is also getting reduced and diversion of ureter into the colon, so ureterosigmoidostomy. Then with metabolic alkalosis, it will happen in three categories. The three categories have been separately asked. They have a potential of being asked separately. So, I have written them in a tabulated form. So, whenever there is ex hypokalemia with metabolic alkalosis, there can be three categories which can, be, which can be identified. First is metabolic alkalosis with low urinary chloride. It will be seen in patients who are having vomiting or nasogastric suction, cystic fibrosis, chloride resistant diarrhea, post hypercapnia and low chloride formula. Second category is high urine chloride with normal BP. It will be seen in patients with Barter syndrome, Gittelman syndrome, diuretic use, East syndrome and autosomal dominant hypoparathyroidism. Before we go further, please remember East syndrome full form. East syndrome is a type of autosomal recessive condition and there are four components of this. E stands for epilepsy. Full form can be asked in exam. A stands for ataxia. S stands for sensory neural hearing loss. And T stands for tubular disorder also called as tubulopathy. This is the full form of East syndrome. So, East syndrome can have high urinary chloride with normal BP and the patient will present with hypokalemia. Third category is high urine chloride with raised BP. They will be hypertensive patients which will include renovascular disease, renin secreting tumor, 
adrenal adenoma cushing syndrome liddle syndrome and licorice injection then we have renal losses without any acid base imbalance this will include tubular toxins it will include tubular toxins like amphotericin b cisplatin and aminoglycosides very very important which tubular toxins can cause hypokalemia without acidosis or alkalosis then it can occur in interstitial nephritis it can occur in diuretic phase of atn it can occur in post obstructive diuresis it can occur in hypomagnesemia and that is why when you correct hypokalemia you should always look for magnesium levels and correction because hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia sometimes in renal disorders they tend to coexist and they tend to amplify the effects of each other and high urine anions like penicillin or penicillin derivative so this is the huge list that you need to remember this is still a relatively doable list compared to the list that you will find once you start consulting multiple textbooks <laughs>